Two of my very favorite activities are making fun of Christians and watching pro wrestling. Now, you might think that those two don't necessarily go together very well, but you'd be wrong. For one thing, making fun of Christians goes with everything. It's what made rooting against the Colorado Rockies in the 2007 World Series so much damn fun. For another thing, there actually has been quite a bit of overlap between wrestling and Christianity, particularly born-again Christianity, which just happens to be the easiest form of Christianity to make fun of. I'd heard about Christian wrestling shows like this one for years, but never actually saw one until a few days ago. I can't help but share because that's just the kind of fellow I am. So now, thanks to the miracle of YouTube, behold Detroit World Outreach presenting the Power Wrestling Alliance. There's no date on any of this, but near as I can figure it, this show took place in November 2005, about a week and a half before the Survivor Series, which was also held in Detroit that year. And what better way to kick off a Christian pro wrestling show than with an in-ring promo from the pastor? It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the senior pastor of Detroit World Outreach, Bishop Jack Wallace! Thank you very much. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Tear the roof off this place, come on. Don't you love the way these megachurch pastors just declare themselves bishops? And dig those leather pants. Just checked with the wrestlers. Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid, is in the house. Buff Bagwell is in the house. Sting is in the house. The animal from the Road Warriors is in the house. Yes, who among us can forget the animal who wrestled so many years alongside his fellow Road Warrior, the Hawk, and was managed by the Paul Ellering. Remember that stiff-as-hell match they had in the AWA versus the Jerry Blackwell and the Larry the Axe Hennig? That was the something, wasn't the it? I'm not trying to bash the bishop, but I question how much he actually knows about pro wrestling. At this point, the YouTube video skips to after the main event, which was apparently Sting going over Bagwell via pinfall after a scorpion oh death God. drop. Then Greg Valentine runs in, Buff knocks some guy off the apron onto a table, which doesn't break, and he and Valentine start working Sting over. Oh, but don't cry, little stingers. Look who's coming to save the day. Whoa! Oh, this place has just become unglued, mate. It's Shawn Michaels! Yay! Someone still capable of having a good match. Super kicks all around. And one for you, sir. This crowd has just erupted. And you've just erupted. Look at this. Excuse me? This crowd has just erupted. And you've just erupted. Look at this. Okay. It would be so easy for me to make some juvenile joke here. But I'm going to cut these kids a break. It's obvious neither one of them is Gordon Soley or even Mike Adamley, yet they're out there trying their best. They're just good, young Christian men with minds free of impure thoughts and sexual innuendo. They obviously have no idea how what they just said sounds to heathens like me and you. So instead of underlining this anymore, instead of mocking them, I'm just going to let it go after I show it six more times. And you've just erupted. Look at this. I can't help it. You've just erupted. Look at this. I can't help it. You've just erupted. Look at this. I can't help it. You've just erupted. Look at this. I can't help it. You've just erupted. Look at this. I can't help it. You've just erupted. Look at this. I can't help it. Now then, Shawn Michaels and Sting, two legends who have worked their entire careers in separate organizations, in the ring together for the first time, 
Big moment in wrestling history, no? What is going to happen? These two men are now in the ring for the first time ever. This has never happened. Sting, Shawn Michaels in the ring. Same time. Same ring. Yeah, see, even Tobias and Buster get it. Which compels me to ask, didn't anyone think of... Now stay with me here, because this gets a little out there. Booking Sting and Shawn Michaels in a match together? To be fair, it's very possible that Shawn's limited involvement here is due to Vince McMahon only allowing him to participate on the condition that he not wrestle. But even under that kind of a restriction, couldn't they have thought of something, anything else, for Sting and Shawn Michaels to do together on their first shared wrestling show ever? As it stands, it's like they made a Spider-Man-Superman crossover movie where the only time they're on screen together is when Peter Parker passes Clark Kent on the way to the men's room. Anyway, Sean makes the save and then makes for the door like the building's on fire, leaving the announcers to take turns acting surprised and puzzled at his presence here, which makes perfect sense considering Shawn Michaels is in the house were practically the first words out of Bishop Jack Wallace's mouth at the top of the show. With Sean gone, our crack commentary team declares Sting the last man standing, even though he just got his ass kicked and had to have someone bail him out. Then things take a turn. The vibe shifts from that of a half-ass 80s indie show to a half-ass late 90s indie show, complete with music and spooky lighting. Sting is suddenly surrounded by a gang of youth group volunteers in dockers and red face paint, which serves Sting right for hanging around in the ring so damn long. I mean, really, the match was over like five minutes ago. What is he still doing there, fucking heat junkie? Sting is being attacked by these demon-like people. Yes, the commentators decide that the guys doing the run-in must be demons. Though I don't get that exactly. What's demonic about them? That they're wearing face paint and beating up Sting? Name me a wrestler who worked for Jim Crockett Promotions in the late 80s who didn't beat up Sting. That's been the guy's whole career. Nikita Koloff turned on him. The Road Warriors turned on him. Lex Luger turned on him a bunch of times. He got kicked out of the Horsemen. Hell, Ric Flair alone has turned on Sting hundreds of times. There's just something about the guy that compels people to knock the shit out of him at every opportunity. It doesn't look like anyone's coming so they lay into Sting, and the crew thoughtfully kills most of the lights so the crowd can't see what shitty wrestlers these demons are. The brawl goes outside, up onto what turns out to be the altar of the church, and one of the demons throws water in Sting's face, which one of the announcers insists is alcohol. It looked like pills, alcohol. What is going on here? How any of this was supposed to be apparent to the live crowd with the lights turned off, I do not know. No, don't tell me. It looks like one of them has a chain. They chain up Sting while the announcers remind me that no one, including Shawn Michaels, who ran in to save Sting from a two-on-one attack mere moments before this supposed 20-on-one attack, is coming to the ring to help Sting out. See, I told you, people hate him. I have a feeling this has nothing to do with Look wrestling. Look at Stinger, he's tormented. He's in wrestling. agony. I don't understand. Look at these, these people are eating. Why are they doing this to the Stinger? What's going on? He's tied up and there's no hope at this point. Look at they've got his feet. The relentless knee. They won't quit. I mean, look at this. He's, he's tied completely. Oh, but wait. Someone is finally coming to the rescue. Who's this? It's Bishop Jack Wallace. 